Hey everyone, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Lauren and today I am going to be doing the book buffet tag. So I am super excited to be doing this tag today. This is only the second time that I have ever been tagged for a book tag. I was tagged by V from the Sassy Library Fox. She is one of my newest booktube friends. I will link her channel down below. You should go over there and check out her check out her channel. So this is the book buffet tag and I can't remember off the top of my head who started this tag but I will put a link down in the video description box if you would like to see the original tag, the, the creator, the original tag. Uh, so yeah, let's just, let's jump right into it. Appetizer. A short story, novelette, or novella that you wish could be expanded into a full-length novel or get a novel length sequel. I think that a book that I wish could have been longer, definitely wish could have been longer, was The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula Le Guin. It, that was a great book. Uh, it had a lot to do with dreams and uh, the experience of dreams and dreams kind of becoming a reality. It was a really cool idea. I've never read anything quite like it, but it was just, it was an itty bitty little thing. So I would have loved to have just kind of been immersed in that world a little bit more. Salad bar. Pick three ingredients that would be your ideal book salad. In other words, things like the trope or the writing style, etc. So my favorite trope in books, I love kind of like the memory loss trope, someone having lost their memory for whatever reason. I bond closely to characters whenever it neither one of us kind of knows what's going on. So that's I would have that trope. One of my favorite sci-fi settings is kind of a cyberpunk setting. So I would put my book in a cyberpunk setting. I don't know, this might be kind of a weird salad, but one of my favorite writers is Jasper Ford. He is He's just so smart. His writing is just incredibly intelligent, very satirical. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it could be a lot of fun to have sort of his writing style in that. So yeah, Memory Last Trope, set in a cyberpunk world, written in the style of Jasper Ford. Dosa Station, a slim volume that packs a significant punch. One of the shortest books with the biggest punch that I have ever read is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. If you have read this book, you know you would, I, I think you'd probably agree with me. This book, it is just one, it's one of the most emotionally intense and meaningful books that I have ever read, ever. I'll never, ever forget my experience reading that book. It is a very short book. The way it explores grief in a novelized fashion, it is, it's an amazing book. It's a short book with just a massive punch. A book that brings you comfort and leaves you fully satisfied and content when you're done with it. I think that for this question, the book for me that I feel that way about is To Be Taught, If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. It's it's a sci-fi novel. I love sci-fi. It's a quiet story and it's not extremely action-packed, which is even unusual for the types of stories I like to read. Generally, I like faster paced, more action-packed stories, uh, but this one, this book, it felt, it left me with this sort of feeling of enchantment for space exploration. It makes you feel really excited, it just even in the here and now, for humanity to ex continue exploring space. And the way that book closes, there's a quote at the end of the book. I don't want to, I'm not going to say what it is or where it comes from, but the quote at the end of the book, it just, I don't know, it just sealed the deal. It was the icing on the cake, the cherry on top. It, I don't know, it just, that book left me feeling content and a grander, just kind of in a grander scale. So, so yeah, to be taught a fortunate. Beef. A book that's hearty, whether it's long, fills you with gooey warmth, or was just a slog to get through. I think a book that I really loved that was very hearty for me was The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, or The Seven and a Half Deaths, which, whether you have the US or UK uh, versions of it. Um, it's that book, it is very, um, it's kind of, it's a mystery and it has a lot of moving parts in it. It's very complex. I wouldn't say it's dense, but it's just, 
a very intricately told story. So it felt, while I was reading it, it felt quite robust, the experience of it. It felt like I was really getting a lot out of it as I was reading it. And it definitely had that gooey warmth that the question is asking about. It, um, the setting, it almost, it gave off that sort of kind of vault, uh, fall time vibe that gives you that kind of warmth inside. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that that would, that's probably, that would probably be my answer for that one. Something you and your friends fight over while waiting for dinner is the bread basket. Talk about a book you fight with other people about. You know, I don't, that I can recall, I don't know that I have ever actually fought with anyone over a book. Uh, reading is subjective, and I think that, you know, however you feel about a book is just as valid as how I feel about a book. Cheese Room, a book with a happy ever after ending. That That's kind of an odd question. I mean, I can name a lot of books that just have a happily ever after ending. I tend to not read a lot of books that have a happy ever after ending. I like books to, uh, I like them to end a little bit more naturally and life does not usually end in just happily ever after. Um, but, you know, for the sake of this question, an ending that I really loved that it, that really wraps it up nicely and made me feel happy, I guess, um, that book is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. It, it's thematically heavy, so I think it's sort of kind of leaning a little bit into literary fiction. I found that book to also, it was very meaningful. It had a lot to say. The themes were very, it was intense. But the ending, I felt like it was just the perfect ending for that book. It was the correct ending. So hopefully that Hopefully that's a good enough answer for that question. Chocolate Fountain. When you read a new author or series, do you dip in and out or do you read it all back to back? Uh, honestly, I tend to just sort of dip in and out. It is very rare that I read the first book or second book or whatever book in a series and just feel like I just have to get to the next one. I tend to prefer standalone novels to begin with. Um, and also, even whenever I love a book, it I, and I do want to continue in the series, I prefer to kind of give it a little breathing room before I move on to the next one. I want to have time to sort of process and absorb the book that came before. It's the same, honestly, for authors as well. I don't, if I find an author I like, I'm not going to read their entire catalog. I, I'll just read, I'll pick and choose here and there and just kind of intersperse their books with everything else. The final question is who is invited? And I need to tag some friends. Any of these people I'm gonna tag, I don't know if any of you have been tagged for this or not. So if you have, just, just ignore me, that's fine. I think that I am going to tag, first of all, my good friend Joe from Average Joe's Library. I would also like to tag Tokyo Reads. I would love to hear what you have to say to this tag. So so yeah, I hope that you will do that. If any of you, any of you out there, if you do it, let me know. I would love to hear your answers to this tag as well. So. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you'll like it and possibly subscribe. And I'll see you next time.